What is up guys? I am in the Amazon jungle in South America. I came here because I design knives for a living and I wanted to smash and test my products, but I also needed to escape and find something I'd lost. I'm gonna take you on the entire trip. We're gonna talk about knives. Well, I just got the crap kicked out of my face. I wanna bring you along. This trip began 10 years ago when I met Joe Flowers. Oh, like, I'm Joe Flowers, founder of Bushcraft Global. We started making YouTube videos about knives and he invited me on the trip. I couldn't go. Until I finally quit my day job, started a pocket knife company. Just jumping on the plane. And off to live a childhood dream to see the Amazon. Here's how this trip works. Joe recruits people like me and we gather in the Amazon at a nature preserve. We sleep there for two days to get acclimated. This is like the treehouse you always wanted as a kid. We learn about the jungle and how to avoid death out here. So this is like the front of the jungle. We're gonna be headed to like the middle of the jungle. Then we're off. Headed to go find a machete shop. For Mark's a machete. Many machetes. One of my favorites. Yeah, this one. Really easy to work with. It's machetes. Machete sheets. Very normal machete for around here. This is a machetes. Okay, we got the machete acquired. Yeah. There are 26 people on the trip. 11 of us are tourists. You've got nine guides and six members of the Matisse tribe. Let's go. We head down the Amazon River, then up the Javari, then up the Itaquai River. We land in the jungle on a piece of private riverfront property. Hey, this is a good adventure so far. Uh, I'm picking a spot to uh, set up camp. Uh, I've been making some tent stakes. They're more like tarp stakes. All right, friends, let me give you a quick tour of the new house here. Inside the tarp, all the goodies to hang up. And then over here is the hammock. I think I'd probably do it different next time. It's uh, after midnight. There's a torrential rainstorm coming down. My little habitat's all right, but it's not great. Six hours later. It was okay. It was all right. It got a little bit wet because I'm learning, right? So let's come under here. I made a fatal flaw right here. See that? Basically this tarp is draining right onto this string and then that string is coming right under there and getting me wet. Could have been better. The biggest reason I'm out here doing this is I want to learn new stuff. I want to do new things. So today will be another day of learning. Let's do it. The Matisse are taking us on a jungle walk today. Get this, the Matisse tribe was living in isolation in the jungles of Brazil until the 1970s. That's when they had first contact from people in the outside world. They still live in jungle villages and they survive using the plants and animals around them. It's called the Bejuco de Agua, which literally translates to water vine. It's already filtered. It's one way to get completely clean water. It's not bitter, it doesn't have bubbles, and it doesn't have an off color. And those are the three things you want to look for when you're trying to drink water out of a vine. You can do it, like for instance, in the United States with other vines as well. It's got spines, but they're nice spines. They're showing us their jungle tricks and their jungle tricks. So they do a ritual. There are some ants here, and just stick their hands in, and who lasts longer? The better hunter. It's a terrible idea. It's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> and you, you leave your arm in here until they bite you. It doesn't take long. <laughs> so I'm sitting here looking at all the trees with spikes and spines on them and the Matisse are just walking through all of this, like no big deal. I just clomp through it. We're all in boots, just clomping. And they move so smooth. It's cool to see. Kiel, what you doing? I am processing chambira and making a mat. I'm feeling very grateful that they have lots of patience while I learn. <laughs> The Matisse is a small tribe, 
around 300 people in total. Their case study in globalization and worlds colliding, sharing their culture with us provides an income. This is a paid gig for them, yet their most sacred rites aren't shared with outsiders. That's things like burial ceremonies and facial tattoo rites. What they do share is less sacred and more entertaining. Uh, this is a Matisse formula that they put in their eyes to see better when they hunt. And then as it's burning your eyes off, they see all the animals they're going to hunt. Try and open up your eyes. There you go. Holy crap. I don't want to. Ants crawling. Fast animals. What's that show where they eat the hot wings and try to talk? <laughs> well, my wife is going to call me an idiot for this one. What I didn't understand is the burning eyes was only a prelude to the volunteer hazing that would happen throughout the entire week. What does it taste like, Peter? Sour. Like a lemon. The biggest trick for the jungle guys is this. When your muck boots get full of your own sweat, you just gotta pour it out. That's literally my sweat. Here's my socks. They were in the same boots. Mmm. I wish I could share this with all of you in your living rooms and on your phones, because that is amazing. This place is wild. I've been up since 4 a.m. I wanted to see this little lake in the morning, and uh, man, it's remarkable out here. Small sounds, big sounds. There's just always something going on here with nature. It's pretty dang amazing. There's a whole bunch of like knife use here. And I think sometimes in our modern life, we open our Amazon packages and that's how we use our knives. And down here, these people are using these tools in ways that if you live in a city, you just, you don't need to. Goran there is a knife maker. He's making custom knives. I use it every day. I need a knife to live in the jungle. Diseñado por mi socio, Goran. Lo produce tops. El chivo de Joe fue el que me trajo este cuchillo de los este... Oh, a spider co. Nice. Here, Dan's a custom knife maker. We're gonna introduce you to Dogwood Dan. I'm carrying a cub, S35VN. I carry it in a little cross jaw. I'm carrying... <laughs> Curtis carrying a, uh, a little bird and trout Nesmic hybrid that I made. I'm Teal and I'm from Oklahoma City. The little bugger by Tops. Yeah, like I walked up and Teal was literally <laughs> stirring her coffee Always with her fun. knife. It's like it's built for it. Today is a baby banter. Mm -hmm. I love it. I'm Cameron, I'm four and a half inch Mora stainless steel. And I'm Andy Wildlander from the Condor Pterosaurus. I'm Nicola. I'm from Belgrade, Serbia. I'm carrying a custom mini Puko from Goran. I'm Peter Magnin, and I am carrying the Magnavore. It's Magna Cut Steel and Terra Tough Scales, neck carry, for when I'm ready to get serious. <laughs> so, I've been carrying two knives since I got here. First of all is the brand new Lulu from NAFS. And I've got it on this ulti clip. So when I draw it, I'm pulling it out like that and putting it right back in like that. Now the other one is the lander in 14C28N. This thing is just killing it down here. And this one in particular has been up against my body. It's been soaked by sweat, but I am not seeing any sort of spots on this and they're just crushing it. This video obviously is sponsored by NAFS. Buy some knives, buy some NAFS knives, and uh, it helps support telling interesting stories like this one. Plug done. 
Okay guys, I want to introduce you to a new friend named Nemanja. Hi everybody. <laughs> this knife is called the Zolia, made by Condor, designed by, by me. Designed basically around the concept of having one knife for life. And most importantly, it passes the finger test. Oh dang! Let's test it out. That was weird. So I've decided with Joe, this is kind of like summer camp for yeah. adults, camping, mm -hmm. woodsy crafts, <laughs> all the things. It's a chance for you to really practice skills in like a real environment that you don't have to, you really have to force yourself to do that. That's so cool. The guides are from many indigenous tribes, so they're allowed to hunt and share what they harvest. A teenager came. That meant that we got to try some jungle deliciousness. It's very light meat here is caiman. Extremely lean. Flavor is really delicate. Mm, I'll give it a solid four stars. Ready for this? He gave it four stars. I'm at 4.8. That's delicious. Yeah, the line on it was shot and I didn't... Alberto was our guide this morning. He's from the Tacuna tribe and he's a master of the jungle. The last night I was sitting there chatting with Alberto and Harry and I showed them where I'm from in Utah, I showed them some pictures on my phone and the first thing they asked was like, what are the animals there? Can you eat those plants? What I realized is like for them, survival techniques are actual survival techniques. They are literally using these techniques to find food and basically stay alive, which that kind of hit me. It was it was a little kind of intense in some ways. It's very good. What does it taste like? Lettucey. Lettucey? Cross between lettuce and a string cheese. Alberto was telling me when he was growing up, he lived um, kind of in one of these off-grid communities, and they would make all of their clothing out of this tree bark. Con nosotros hacemos este, nosotros cantamos canción del árbol. Peri peri lo machica piaca lo corilla hijo hijo. Peri peri lo machica piaca huarujo. So after a whole bunch of pounding, you end up with this. Almost looks like leather. But it is tree bark. So what Alberto's making is a like a little backpack. But he was just telling me that they they make these masks for all these ceremonies. <laughs> I told Alberto to walk like a model, and that's what he gave me. I love it. <laughs> hey, muchas gracias. Muy bien. <laughs> I have one of the monkey skulls from the Matisse tribe that they caught. Just woke up, it's 5.45, just starting to get light out here. And uh, Victor came and knocked at my uh, hammock and said, hey, let's go fishing. This boat literally sits 
like two inches off the surface of the water. Kind of want to be out of the water, you know. It's like all the aquarium fish like live in this pond. These fish will get caught in the net. They end up coming out without eyes on them because the piranhas get to them. Wow. Mm. Maybe my favorite part is the part you're not seeing is it's amazing to hear about people's lives down here in Brazil and Colombia. They're not easy. Um, they're definitely much harder than my life in the States. Fascinating to hear. I, I think we have so much more in common than we give ourselves credit for. my used clothes from yesterday. What's going on with your legs, man? It's some kind of insect bites. I don't know. <laughs> Everything here bites. Get a load of these pristine ankles, giving some of myself back to the jungle. <laughs> Let me show you the uh, setup over here. One of the coolest things about this trip is they cook for you. I believe this is like equivalent of deep fried dough with some sort of jelly. Oh, this is peak cuisine. Hey, man. Get it. Oh yeah. <laughs> So there's this rumor I've heard like my entire life that if you jump in water full of piranhas, they will eat you. I figure we ought to go dispel that rumor a little bit this time. Let's go swimming. That's so nice. Not a single piranha. Also, the water feels like a bathtub. It is warm. El Michael Phelps de la selva aquí. <laughs> Summer camp continued all week. Days blended together into a blur of crafts and jungle walks and oatmeal and bugs. It's a harlequin bug. Ooh, I do not want to get bit by him though. Yeah, the camp directors made sure the fun never stopped. Oh, you're fine? Leoncio will be your Logan master. Okay. Using the Lulu. Metal, metal. Hmm. There you go. Leo has explained to me I'm going to pull the insides out with a chisel. If I do it too fast, Leo me va a decir, mal lento, mal lento. Something's biting my leg. Something's always biting my leg. So I'm just gonna take my sweet, sweet time here. The smoother the bore, the better the dart goes. Hey Curtis, what is this? Uh, this is the mouthpiece, I believe, to the blowgun. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure he's mad at me because I did it wrong. <laughs> Mouthpiece portion. I just spent the last hour carving this little guy for my blowgun with this little tops knife. Basically, Leo just told me to take this tar and I'm going to heat it up and then rub it down the edge of my blowgun. You've got that tar along the edges to seal up the two parts. So, next, Leo's going to help me wrap it. It's really cool to be able to learn from these people who know these things that I just have no idea about, right? So Goran and Leo just taught me a different way to use a knife. I've never done it before. Uh, basically, we're trying to make these arrows for the blowgun and get them perfectly round. I'm going to take it and flip it this way, and then I'm going to pull away from me. And then you rotate the bamboo, but it works really remarkably well. Super cool way to do it. A little bit of cotton, and then like that. Okay, Leo, get the number. Time is 
Eso. <laughs> wow, that's cool. The Matisse spent the week making things like this blow dart poison that Bina is cooking up. Wow, Mira. They made bracelets, pottery, and hammocks. We were all having a swell time until the feds showed up. Nothing like guys with guns to remind you that the Amazon is a hotbed of poaching, drugs, illegal mining, and logging. These guys are from Funai, the National Indian Foundation. And they patrol the Amazon to protect Indians' lands and rights. That's scary. <laughs> Goran and Joe do this tour legit, and all the paperwork was spotless, so the feds headed on their way. They're hauling water back to camp. So it's super hard to keep camera gear dry here. There's this sunny spot over here where I've got everything trying to dry. In fact, this sunny spot is because this is private land, and they've actually cut the trees in this area and they're harvesting them they're letting them dry out but uh, it's also really good for my camera to dry out so that's what I'm doing right now it's literally melting my solar panels and making them move so. it's just a harsh environment down here all right guys today Joe and Goran have instructed everybody to get their boots on and we're headed across the river for a surprise There's a monster lurking in this puddle, and the Matisse want it out. Oh, sorry, it's an electric eel. This eel can shock you with a wicked 600 volts of electricity. In the dry season, they live in small puddles. And this thing probably weighs 40, 40 pounds. The Matisse were waving a stick through the water to release a poison that forced the eel to the surface to meet their spear and our dinner plates. It's been smoked for about 24 hours and it is a very fatty, tender meat. I think like Toro Sushi, but smoky. It's got that really buttery texture. That's a lot of fat. The taste is delicious, that smoky taste. Yeah. Amazing. The texture is really close to warm butter though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, snot, I would put the texture at like snot. Mmm, mm. well bacon. The week disappeared into a blend of filming. I have made a spoon. Whittling. Yeah, more of a chalice. Walking the jungle an optional ceremonial intrigue. This is compo ceremony. It's a type of frog called Phyla medusa bicolor, and the Matisse basically harass it until it lets out this poison and they gather the poison. They burn two spots on the arm and then they put that poison on there and it's supposed to, meant to make your body go through some hardships. What you feeling? Um, heat, heat wave, heat flashes. Heart rate slowing down. I felt like I was being hung upside down and being choked. Like all the blood was rushing to my head and my vascular system was being restrained. Uh, I'm recalling better days. <laughs> Hope it's worth the show. Um, but then they wash it off with water and then you're good. I don't know, quite a rush, quite a rush, quite a rush. In Matisse villages, this Marawin ceremony represents the spirit of ancestors coming to toughen them up to survive the hardships of the jungle. I respect the ritual, but it's voluntary, and I already have memories of jungle hardship to take home. No, bro, not doing that. Oh, 
The last night in the jungle is a long campfire and a musical goodbye from each of the different tribes. But I see your flag on the marble lot. Love is not a victory march. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Back at the nature preserve, we finished off the trip with a party at the lodge. And Alberto, he brought his ceremonial wood bark outfit and danced for us. The night ended with more traditional dancing from a local group, and I lightened my luggage on the way out. <laughs> And so I'm just gonna drop this guy off. Yes, I am. Really? Yes, 100% is yours. Oh, thank you, man. I come off. <laughs> okay. Bring it in, brother. <laughs> this time in the jungle forced me to slow down and disconnect. I've spent 13 years selling pocket knives on the internet. Always on, always checking messages, always busy. And somewhere in the chaos, I lost my ability to be still and enjoy the journey. How to be inspired by heaven and the world around me and then create from that inspiration. I had to relearn how to slow down. As I edit this video at 5 a.m., I'm not sure all my lessons in slowing down are over, but I think I'm learning and that's good enough for now. See you out there, amigos.